Hello folks, this is a short video explaining both how to configure and install everything to be able to use your hands on TCS with the Leap Motion, with the Leap Motion controller, and also a small review of the current state of the Leap Motion support on, on DCS, the official one, not any external plugins or anything like that. So first the device, it's called a Leap Motion controller. It's basically a near-infrared camera with some LEDs inside, so it can light up and track your hands while they are in front of it, and transmit that data to the, to the computer. You just need to plug it with a USB cable to the, to the machine, and have the drivers installed, and have a game that supports it. It's just that. Uh, and I'm using it mounted on the headset, something like this, in front of, of the headset, so Whenever I am looking to, my hands are in front of me and the, the device can track them. To mount the limb motion on the, on the headset, I designed a piece of hardware myself and 3D printed it. It's basically just a, a clip where you can attach the limb motion and with some velcro on the top, you attach it to a piece of a little piece of velcro that you need to, to glue to your headset on top of it. So it's very little, little modification needed on your on your headset, and that's it. You can have a little motion on your headset. So now the drivers, you just need to download the official driver from the the Leap Motion website. You go to the this URL. The link will be in the description. You click on download. Yes, download again. You wait for it to unload. Come on, there. And there are currently two two versions of the driver, the V4 and the V5. I'm using the V5, and I think it's it's better at tracking the hands. But um, try I have tried with the V4, and it should also work. Right now I'm not using it, but it should work too. So let's open this folder, which is being downloaded, and. There it is. You need to extract the file. Extract here. And let's see the progress. Yeah, ready. And open the folder, the subfolder, and this is the file you need to, to run. All the other stuff are not, not required, are just developer stuff, but this is the, the driver. So you just run this installer click on next, 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 install, etc. And I suggest you, you reboot your computer after that. I had some issues with it uh, before rebooting. But after you have rebooted, if you have your Libmotion connected, you should see something like this on your taskbar, this small icon of the Libmotion. Here you have a few utilities, for, for instance, the settings. I recommend you run on troubleshooting this, uh, where is it? Here, this recalibration process, it will help it track better. And after you do that, everything should look green here, which is which means it's it's ready and and tracking your hands. And you can test it with a small VR application it it has here. Right click, visualizer. It will use Steam VR, and it will open something that you will see now. Right now, there it is. What you are seeing is the the camera from from the Leap Motion, and if you extend your your hands in front of it, it should detect them, and as you see, it should show you like a skeleton of your hands. If that's working, then everything is ready to be used on on DCS. If this is not working, well, there, there could be a lot of issues, but if you see your hands and you don't see the, the skeleton, that means it's not tracking them properly, you should run the recalibration, you should wipe out the the, the, the lip motion uh, little glass pane, it shouldn't have any any scratches or, or dirt, and Sometimes I also find that it is, it is useful to just unplug and plug it again, just like that. Sometimes it's not detecting my hands, I just unplug it, plug it again, 
and then my hands are, are there. So that's it for the drivers. Now let's go to DCS. I'm using the open meta version, just in case you don't know how to do that. In Steam, you just need to right click on it, properties, betas, and choose the open beta, public beta versions. And it will download almost the entire game again, because most of the files will have changed. So you just need to, to wait for it to download. So now on DCS, basically for it to work, you only need to enable one setting under the special tab on Leap Motion. You just need to click this, enable. Uh, this second setting, I don't, I'm not sure what it does, but I, I leave it on by default. But with this setting, with the Leap Motion enabled, you should be able to see your hands. I also suggest to disable on the, the VR tab. This other setting, the use hand controllers setting, which I found it to have some issues with the with the limb motion. If both are active, sometimes it, it gets confused and and stop tracking your hands. So after that, you should be able to to see your hands if they are in front of you. And on the menu menus, you only have one way of of using your hands, which is the the laser pointer. If you clench your fist, you should be able to, to see a laser point. And with the same logic of the VR hands, you can also use the right click by turning your, your hand upside down. But the oof, sorry. The issue is precisely that. The gesture to, to click is supposedly this with your thumb, but it's super unreliable. For for instance, each time you try to do that, the, the pointer moves, so you end up clicking on the wrong stuff. But also, it's, it's not really good at detecting when you are trying to do that. Yeah. For instance, I'm doing that right now, and, it, and it's not clicking at all. And before, I wasn't doing that, and it did a click. So it's super, super unreliable. I'm not even using the hands on the, on the menus. One thing you can do to, to overcome that is to use your, your fist to point at stuff and have uh, different buttons on your throttle or, or stick map to the, to the click and right click buttons. So for instance, I have a click and right click buttons on my throttle and I can do that. For instance, let's open the mission. So you can do that without having to do the, the gesture, but it still will sometimes do clicks that you don't want it to do, so it's not really useful, at least not right now. Uh, if your hands are, are not there, if you are using trying to use your hands and DCS is not detecting them, I found, a, I found out a couple of tricks that make it work again. Uh, the most common one is that you're under poor lighting conditions, so basically have a room better, better, better light, like turn up. But also, sometimes you need to enable and disable, disable and enable the the setting on the special tab on Leap Motion. You just disable it, enable it. Then you unplug the Leap Motion and plug it again. There, and suddenly your your hands start working. That happens a lot. Uh, and every time I try to use my hands, I in, in each session of, of gameplay, I usually have to do that maybe one or, or two times. So it's something really, really annoying. But you do that and it starts working. And you can even do that while flying. Not only on the on the menus, if you are flying and you, you don't see your hands, you can do that too and it will, they will start working. So now let's go to the cockpit, so you can see how to use them in flight, because it's more useful than in the in the menus. There we are. Let me just lower the the volume of the plane so you can hear me. Uh, Okay, so the, the biggest difference is that now you can also use your hands to touch stuff. For instance, you can just use your finger to use buttons on your, on your plane, and they work. 
so that works really really good it's not the tracking on the lip motion is not super it's not perfect but if you do this basically this gesture it can track your hand really well and the the collisions on dcs are correctly calculated so you can use for instance the upfront up front control but sometimes one of the issues that will happen is that when you remove your hands from the field of view of the lip motion sometimes the hand will stick there will stay there uh, let me see if i can do that no. okay i'm not trying i'm not able to reproduce it right now but sometimes your hand will stay there frozen even if when your real hand is not in in that position that's one minor issue you just show your hand again and move it away again and it fixes it itself the other issue is that the tracking at certain angles is not great for instance here i can really easily touch stuff and, and it works but if i try to use controls on the on the consoles that angle is, is really bad for the lip motion is so it's constantly constantly losing track on or not understanding what i'm trying to do with with my hands doing funny gestures that i'm not doing so I wouldn't use the the hands for the startup sequence, for instance, because you have to do a lot of fiddling with with the switches and buttons on the on the consoles, and you will struggle with it. But for stuff like configuring your plane before a bomb run while you're in flight, for instance, configuring your your stores, it works great. So for me, that's that's the use case, and it's also awesome to just be able to to use your cockpit as in real life. Another issue are the knobs and, and stuff that you need to turn to use. For instance, the volume or brightness knobs. They kind of work, but I'm not sure how the, the logic of them is. It, I'm, I'm not able to, to consistently use them and, and do, make them do what I want. I basically fiddle with them and they, they kind of move, but I, they don't work like I expect them to work. So for now, I, I'm not using it for for any of those uh, controls. Another thing that is a really big problem, and this is probably the, the biggest issue of the lip motion right now with the with DCS, is that it's always tracking your hands whenever they are in in the field of view. And so, if you try to use your real life hotas, your your uh, throttle and, and stick. The hands will try to do stuff with the cockpit while you do that. So, for instance, if I grab my real-life photos, which isn't in the, the exact same position as the as the virtual one, my hand right there is in the real-life photos, and as you can see, it's touching the deformation lights. Uh, so, any controls that are near your real-life photos will be accidentally activated, which is really really annoying. Also, sometimes it will misunderstand your, your hand gestures and will uh, think that you are trying to, to point with your, your fist. So, for instance, I grab the, the throttle and it will start doing the, the pointer thing right there. And while it does that, I cannot use my, my real mouse. So, if I'm using the throttle and trying to, to use, do stuff with the mouse, and if I'm looking in that direction, then I, I lose my mouse. So that's really a, a big problem but the solution will be quite easy we just need two keys one for the right hand and one for the oh sorry one from the left hand and one for the right hand to be able to enable and disable the hands so i for instance will have all the, the two hands all the time disabled by default and only when i want to use my right hand to do stuff with the up for up front control or the nmfds then I will enable my hand with a button in my real life throttle. So my left hand clicks something, suddenly I have a right hand able to be used. I do stuff, configure, blah, 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 and then disable the hand and it's gonna work. That, it's a fairly easy fix to do from, from the ED side. And it will mean a, a world of difference for us lip motion users. Some people suggested that maybe the throttle and stick 
could have a, like a, a region of no interacting when your hands are there. But the problem is that when you are first, you will need to to have your real life hotas perfectly calibrated with the with the virtual ones in the, in the same alignment, in the same position, which is really hard. But also when you are grabbing your hotas, the lip motion tracking gets confused a lot. Of. So your hands move and do funny stuff around them, which for me means that it's impossible to, to just rely on that. I, I really need to be able to disable a hand when I'm trying to, to grab my real life photos. Uh, so that's it. Basically, I'm using it mostly to interact with the multifunction displays and the up front control for, for in-flight stuff, not for the start top sequence or, or more uh, with anything that is related to the, the console basically I, I'm not using it it's a work in progress so I guess we'll we need just to wait for ED to to improve it and that's it I hope it has been useful for you and then let me know your opinions in the comments see you people